Hi, everybody. I'm Fran Spielman, and with me is Alderman Scott Wagesback. I'm Morning, saying Fran. that right. Yes, you are. <laughs> and you could be, maybe, or at least a candidate for the chairman of the City Council Finance Committee. That's a possibility. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about your background first. Graduate of Colorado State University, Kent College of Law, and then you were in the Peace Corps in Kenya after college, working with UNICEF, uh, and then also you worked with the State Department and the American Bar Association and various governments in the Balkans to assist war crimes tribunal, tribunals. How did all that shape you? Well, um, you know, after I got out of college, I was looking uh, to get into politics, maybe go to D.C., and I also had this issue of wanting a little bit more adventure in my life, and the Peace Corps was out there. I had a great professor in college and got me hooked into it, and I spent two years in Kenya working with uh, women's groups and schools and doing uh, building clinics and water systems. So it was, that was probably the thing that shaped me the most about uh, communicating with people and learning from other people and learning from other cultures. And what, how did that shape what you do now? Well, I think um, when I got back, I still always have this uh, sort of international bug and, and, you know, collaborating with people. So I do spend some of my time now just staying in tune with those things. But as you read, you know, I worked in the Balkans for a while as well. We were working on war crimes tribunal, but we also did economic development with some of the countries that were coming out of war. Um, for instance, Kosovo. Uh, we were also working in Albania, Macedonia. So we had a lot of experience um, doing economic development, rule of law, rebuilding these countries. And I kind of brought that back to sh Chicago and just said, you know, when I was running for alderman, um, maybe I can keep along that same plane of existence and create something new out of it. We're not going to need a war crimes tribunal in the city council, are we? Uh, no, but we might need some other ethics tribunals. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, going to come forward with a new mayor, but that's something I think we've been clamoring for for many years. Now, you mentioned the word collaboration that you learned, and yet yeah. when people talk about you, or at least some of the old guard, Alderman Beale, Alderman Kerry Austin, they say he doesn't work well with others. He doesn't collaborate. Uh, it would be hard for us to work with him as finance chairman. And you say what to that? I'd say just the opposite. I think I've always been somebody that's been great to work with. Um, I challenge people. I challenge them to do better, as I did with Mayor Daly, with Mayor Emanuel, and almost all of my fellow aldermen. I've always been out there basically saying, hey, look, you know, we're going to pass something but let's make it the best we can for taxpayers and the citizens of this city. And so I think what a lot of people uh, mist mistake for um, challenges to the system or challenges to people is actually me just being, trying to be collaborative and doing what's best for everybody. Um, I always try to come across as, you know, meaningful and serious, and I think people kind of take that as, as an affront to um, maybe politics the way they play it. Like you're holier than thou? Yeah, I've heard that. And I, I, you know, push back on that with people. And I say, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to take that tack. I'm just trying to show you that there's alternatives to everything. And I've always said that in the city council. I've always felt like there's, um, there's never something that's going to be 100% correct or 100% to the advantage of uh, people of the city. So whether it was the parking meter deal or opening it up the second time, um, looking at different programs that the mayor's put forward, the Neighborhood Opportunity Fund, or most recently something like Lincoln Yards, where you saw a little bit of a battle going on. It was always, how can we do this better? Or what are, why don't we take a, a look at um, the way this thing might fall off you know, in an incorrect way? So that's all it was, was just So you're challenging. a pain in the rear then? You know, it's kind of a pain to I, keep questioning and pushing and changing and Yeah, asking. that's how that's how the two mayors have taken it. That's how a lot of aldermen take it. But um, I've always done it, I think, in a, in a very respectful way. I mean, you're there. Hopefully you see that, that my challenges are about the facts or about policies. They're never about personal issues with people. But it takes a different skill to lead than it does to be the pain in the butt on the side. Yeah. So how will you make that adjustment? Well, I think if I were, let's say I were finance chair, I'm in, a, I'm in a leadership position in the Progressive Caucus. I've been the chair for the last several years. And what I try to do there is make sure that everybody is aware of what we're doing, 
that they're all um, part of uh, the process and part of sitting at the table with us to say, here's what we're moving forward with. Do you have any input from any of those people? I've always been inclusive. I've always made sure that um, no matter which side of the table you're on, uh, whether it's you know looking at the political side of things from the Democrat Republican side, and we do have some of those in the council, working with people you know in my history where I've had to work with some of the worst people in the world and bring them to the table. You know, working in the Balkans wasn't easy. Working with uh, warlords or working with kind of dictatorial people in Africa wasn't always easy. But you have to learn how to do that. You have to learn to make, uh, make sure that they have a seat at the table too. So do you have the votes, do you think? Well, it's gonna, I think what have it's gonna come- Have you made phone calls? I've I talked assume. to a lot of aldermen. How um, many votes do you have? I would say right around 25, but I haven't called every alderman yet. Um, well, get on the phone. What are well, you doing here? Well, I don't here? think I'm gonna be calling Ed Burke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but seriously, do you think you have the votes or will have the votes? I think I would. Um, you know, we're talking about a couple of aldermen who really want that position, maybe three. And Who are they? Tom Tunney. Well, I think you've pointed out sure. Tom Tunney, uh, Alderman Beal. Right, um, and you. And me, and I, I think if I- All of you endorsed Lori Lightfoot. Yes. You first. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's not a big deal. I think- um, what You don't the, think you're, you're not saying I'm owed this because I was out there first. No, and I never thought that. And I think the people who pushed that in the, in the campaign were wrong. Um, they just didn't get what was going on. They don't understand that my history is one where I can come out and say something and mean it and not have to have cut a deal to uh, not only mean it, but get behind somebody. But and, there were rumors that the deal had already been cut. Yeah, and it's, ob it's pretty obvious that it hasn't been cut because she's still been, um, you know, pretty closed about it. And, I mean, if I had it, I would probably come out and say, here's all the things that we're doing. Now, with that said, do we need to fix that um, committee? Do we need to fix all the committees? I think we do. All right, so and let's talk about how. If you get it, what will you do with it? Well, the first thing I would do is um, a similar transition uh, review of that committee, just like Mayor Lightfoot or Mayor elect Lightfoot is doing with all of the city structures. And that's pretty, I mean, I've done that in other countries, I've done it in other cities. Um, essentially, you're looking at all the staff, you're looking at what the needs are, you're looking at what the tasks are for that committee. And uh, I think that, you know, we have some good people there that have been doing some, some difficult work over the years, but I think we need to restructure that committee. We basically got the workers' comp pushed out to the comptroller's office. Right, it has a $2 million budget and then some with that finance no one, general. Right, that nobody knows really where that money is going to. Right, so, so do you think you can cut it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think we what, could. What, in half, a quarter? Um, of I, w I would say right off the bat, probably looking at uh, half. It depends on how much we need to um, keep over uh, with workers' comp in the comptroller's office. I think it depends on um, what the other needs are going to be for other committees. Mayor Lightfoot is talking about creating a Department of Environment. We're probably going to need a real environmental committee, and maybe they need staff. But what we need to do is right-size it by going through each one of the tasks that people do there and say, which, block, which silo do you sit in, and how are we going to move forward to make sure that you're doing the right work? We've yeah. all heard a lot that there's not a lot of experience in the budget office, the finance committee. I think there's some, but I think we need to improve on that. So how much staff does he really need when he doesn't have workers' comp anymore? What's left? Well, and that's He, he that's has key. the claims for uh, potholes and stuff like that. Maybe that should be taken away as well, right? Well, that might be an executive branch uh, issue as well. Um, one thing I've been talking to the transition team about is looking at all the things, and we can get into this later, about aldermanic privilege. And some of those things fall into the finance committee, which you're you know, talking about the claims for potholes. You see some of that go through the city clerk's office, but then it goes through finance, and we need to streamline a lot of that. Um, but I think the real thing there is looking and talking to each one of the individuals that still work in that office and say, what is it that you do every day? What is your task? What are you really working on? and then really assess what those people uh, need to be doing in the future. What about the fact that he has hired employees for other aldermen as a way of building chits for himself? I would get rid of that completely. That, that's unnecessary. Maybe where those people need to go is into other committees, the newly created committees, if, if, if we have them, or right-size those other committees as well. I think the problem is that some people look at this uh, finance committee chair position as a way to 
you know, have a lot of jobs. I mean, I've heard that out sure. there. It's very simple, um, a simple approach to look at it. I'm looking at it as how are we going to really reform the city council? And if we're going to do it right as the mayor wants to do, as she has a mandate from 75% of the people in the city, then we've got to go through and cut a wide swath and make sure that we're looking at every task that's happening in there. What are we supposed to review? Um, if we're talking about reviewing bond documents that come down from the mayor's office or from the uh, CFO, then we need to make sure we have people on staff who are reviewing that and giving us an analysis that either counters or is comparable to what the mayor's office is doing. Well, how is that different from the Office of Financial Analysis? Does the Finance Committee need a staff That's, doing that, or does that Office of Financial Analysis need it? Uh, I think the I think a committee on finance should have a couple people like that, but that's we've talked about moving some people over to COPA as well and making COPA more independent, almost uh, more like the Inspector General's office. So you envision a streamlined staff that does more policy stuff, not the mundane? Well, you still have to have the mundane to kind of keep moving things through. What mundane do you need? Uh, just, you know, making sure your agendas are set, making sure that the staff are getting all the documents, making sure the, the documents go out to all the aldermen, uh, basic committee structure. But I think after that, that's where we really need to reassess. What about legal fees for Alderman? He presides over that too. Well, that's I think another that's, power in his hands. Yeah, some of, us have, some of us have talked about um, creating a, a city council lawyer position, mm -hmm. having a parliamentarian, and that could be maybe the same person. Um, but that would have to be, we have to set that up in a way that's a little bit more independent than just one person deciding who does it. But Burke decides who gets their criminal attorney's fees paid. Well, and, and I think there's that's, been a lot of that lately, and there'll be more. Yeah, and I think that needs to be cut up too. That um, we need to have either an outside panel that works with perhaps the Board of Ethics or the Inspector General's office, who we want to empower more as well for the oversight over the committees, and really have a better structure. Um, either you know some type of committee or panel that helps decide who's going to get those legal fees. So Tony has billed himself as the voice of business on the city council. He's made yeah. his case. Make yours. Well, I think, um, you know, I, I understand that he thinks that that's where business has to be protected. Um, I mean, if you look at my ward, his ward, we're pretty much along the same lines. Um, we're constantly seeing small businesses, large businesses created. Um, so I don't think I'm too far off from what he's, what he's doing. Um, I think what people really want, though, is somebody who's been challenging the system, somebody who has been critical of the bad deals and the crooked deals and the bad politics that have been going on. I mean, if you look back at, there were only a handful of us who've ever challenged Ed Burke over the years, whether it was on his security detail, on the workers' comp, um, on his property tax assessment work. Um, there were only a couple of us who really did that. And I think that's what people are looking for when we take over leadership of the city council, that's somebody who's, it's gotta be somebody who comes in, which would be me, and basically says, we're gonna restructure this thing for the good of the people of the city. Otherwise, it's just same old, same Otherwise, old? Otherwise, yeah, it's the same old thing. I don't see anybody else committed to, you know, working with the inspector general, working with the new mayor, um, in a way that we've been talking about, that, you know, you've talked about, um, collaborating, but also making sure that the mandate is followed to change the ethical issues that we have in the city. All demanic prerogative, she's promised to get rid of it by executive order, and yet Joe Ferguson, the inspector general, says you cannot legislate relationships. You yeah. can only shine the light on it. How should she handle this? How can she? How can it be done? Well, I think she, uh, she has some simple things that she could do by executive order. And it might actually, what are those? Um, it might look like uh, some of the tasks, the executive tasks that CDOT is supposed to do or the building department. Immediately say, look, Alderman, um, you might get notification about this, but you're not going to get the decision anymore or the perception of a decision a la Ed Burke, you know, with the Burger King. Um, my executive order is going to say, here's the rules on driveways, here's the rules on alley access, here's the rules on permitting, and a lot of other things that have kind of morphed into uh, aldermen making the decision or overruling Black those parties. departments. Yeah, a lot of those things can be done via the executive order just saying they're going to remain as executive 
on the executive side or the administrative side. Um, aldermen can still have input. I'm not worried about that. Now, when it comes to the broader issue of aldermanic prerogative and zoning, mm -hmm. that can't be an executive order. No, it um, can't. So how do you handle that? Well, I think what she needs to do, and I've, I've talked to her staff about this, her transition staff as well, and I've said, look, um, you know, the zoning code is this amorphous code. It's a code about what you're not supposed to do versus what you can do. And when you look at some of the other codes around the country, um, they have proactive codes. So what we need to do is spend some time, just like they did on, and I'll, I'll give Emmanuel credit and Judy Friedland credit on revamping the building code. And Daly revamped the zoning code too. He did, back in 95, I think it was. Um, they did revamp the zoning code, but again, it was structured so that it's, here's what you're not supposed to do. And what we saw with aldermanic prerogative was you have aldermanic prerogative being used to block affordable housing, mm -hmm. but you also have aldermanic prerogative used to build towers along the river in Lincoln Yards, both really bad ideas. Um, I think some of us have, when we have guidelines that are structured the right way, that are proactive for communities, but also move projects through for developers if, if they're good projects, that's what we need to do with uh, the zoning code as well. Restructure the zoning code, get real urban planners involved, make sure that they actually have a say in what's being built in this city, and then we can move things through a quicker timeline. So you're suggesting rewriting the zoning code to do what to prevent all the manic prerogative and them blocking affordable housing and stuff? Well, I think you can, uh, there's gonna be changes to affordable housing and how that's added to every different project, but I think what we're talking about is uh, revamping the code improving the code so that it looks more like Portland or New York City. When people bring up New York City, they're like, wow, stuff just goes really fast in New York City. That's true, but in New York City, they're basically told, here's the box you're gonna work in. And if you can work in that box right off the bat, your project will soar right through. How do you prevent a guy from stopping or, or a gal from stopping uh, affordable housing and perpetuating segregation. That, that would come through the zoning code and that would basically say you don't have the authority to block it if it meets these certain criteria. I see. Okay. Now, uh, you told a funny story about Rahm Emanuel the first time you met him because I wrote a story this week about a legacy without listening. Tell us that story about the first time you met Rahm Emanuel. Well, if I could step it back a little bit, I, um, the first time I met Lori Lightfoot in this transition period, um, it was a handshake, some coffee, and a cordial, you know, This is discussion. after the endorsement. Uh, it was, yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, it was basically sitting at a table like this, having a good conversation about what's the future of the city. And I remember when I first met Rom, we, it was right after the election, right before inauguration, same transition. time frame. And I walked in, we had a, a few good, you know, niceties that were exchanged. But then he immediately launched into, um, I, I would call it a bit of a tirade against Any me. Any profanity involved? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh. I've, we've always- Has he kept that in check during his mayoralty? Uh, I think in, in the public, yes. Um, but not often in behind closed doors. And- What did he lace into you about? Uh, just what I had done to Mayor Daley and that he didn't, Basically, the, the same thing's not gonna happen to me. And my viewpoint on it was, um, all I was doing was what we talked about previously, was pointing out potentially bad uh, things on deals or programs, how we can do things better. And I think he mistook that for uh, challenging the mayor personally, um, which I've never looked at it that way. You know, Again, when you come out with the facts, that's what you're trying to do. And I remember I had, my staff and I, we're doing the same thing right now, but we had, this, um, we had this spreadsheet that we put together and we had said, look, look at all the things, when you're working with the individual departments as a staffer here and listening to the constituents, what are the problems that you see in departments and how can we make them better? So we put this nice spreadsheet together and I remember handing it to him and I think he kind of looked and then- Threw it know, away. And at that moment I kind of felt like, okay, we're not, we're getting off on the bad foot here right off, right off the bat. And it never got better. No, I don't think it really did. Um, but that's, you know, that's, uh, that's the way he approached, I think, a lot of other people, too, when he was in Washington, and I felt it was wrong for Chicago. Now, the socialists are in your caucus now. You met with them this week, right? 
Uh, six of them. They, we've talked to them about um, joining the caucus. You know, we have a set of rules that you have to follow, and um, we've invited some of those folks in as well as other. Set audience. of rules. Well, it's basically, uh, you know, there's a, um, you have to go to a certain amount of meetings oh. to be part of that. You can't just be part of it. You have to actually attend the meetings and work with us on legislation. Okay, so do you think there's going to be a push and pull here? I mean, you're not liberal enough for them. Isn't that something? <laughs> Well, that's, uh, it's interesting, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, th I think in the same way that I've collaborated with everybody else in the council, you know, we'll collaborate with them. I've talked to many of them already. Um, I've helped them on some of their developments that were kind of waiting in the wings or, or being passed. I've talked to them about uh, simple things like, um, you know, coming into the sidewalk season for restaurants or bars, talked about um, cleaning up and, you know, how you how you get things done on the, at the basic level. But they have bigger plans. They're targeting the ComEd franchise. They want lower rates. They want to ban shutoffs. Will you work with them on that? That that contract is up in 2020. I'll work with them on on anything that they want to. I think uh, what I'd like them to do is make sure that they're listening um, when they first come in and learning from some of the other aldermen. Um, you know, one of the things I told them was I think we really all want to focus on this what the mayor is talking mayor elect is talking about, which is reforming the city council. And we need to come in with a new set of parameters, a new set of standards for the city council that everybody adheres to. And I think Mayor Lightfoot is gonna come in with those standards, you know, making sure we have oversight by the IG. Um, we, we've basically said, we'll work with you on all the issues that you're talking about, but- um, First, we need to do this. Yeah, first, in the first month or two, we need to set the standards a lot higher for the city council. And I think that's what we're trying to bring to the table. Um, and it's important that Mayor Lightfoot get a good vote on that first vote. The yes. vote on the aldermanic product, prerogative, the vote on the IG expansion, all these things, because that sets the tone, I have the votes, don't mess with me. Right, right. and I, I think it also sets the tone for the future of this city. That's really what we're talking about here. Um, you know, when, it, when I see the things that have been done over the years, um, it's frustrating to watch. It, it was frustrating to watch, um, you know, my colleague Ed Burke doing what he was doing, uh, conflicts of interest all the time. But it wasn't just him. There were obviously other aldermen doing things that, uh, you know, led to indictments or charges. And I think it's the tip of the iceberg. And we're going we're to see a lot more of that. Um, How big coming. is this scandal going to get when the second most powerful alderman has worn a wire for two years on the first? Oh, yeah. And if you How look big at, is it going to be? How many I, aldermen I, will be indicted, do you think? I think you, more than one handful. Um, more than a handful? Yeah. I mean, if you look at the feds. Are we talking 10? Oh, that, I'm not sure about a specific number, but I, I think if you look at, and it might include Burke, Cochran, Solis, um, some of the others who've, you know, done some things that, I, that uh, I think led down the wrong path, but um, you really look at what the feds asked for there, an extension of time, and I think that was not just about Ed Burke, but it was about a broader um, collection of people. Progressive revenues. You pushed Rahm Emanuel to consider them. He never did. What do you think Mayor Lightfoot should push? Well, I think she was already down in Springfield working with Governor Pritzker on the progressive income tax. I'm talking local. Tax. Yeah, well, uh, you could do a progressive income tax at the state level. You could also do one at the city level. Um, Not without state approval. That's right. That's why I think she was down there talking to him about, here's a list of things, you know, what can we what can So we you're talking about here? a city income tax that's progressive? A city income tax? Yeah, a if, new city income tax? If the state doesn't do it, the city could do one ask the state for that permission. Um, should she? I think she should, just in case the state one doesn't go through. Um, we've talked about service taxes. That, came, that was a report from the Inspector General several years ago that would raise hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, I think some of her bigger revenue items might actually be uh, reviews and audits by the Inspector General. So if you look at workers' comp, if you look at what you've covered for many years, which is police overtime, I know we need police in the right places, but we need to cut back on that uh, just basic overuse of overtime without getting results at the end of it. She's talked about the, fine, the shortfall being dire, yeah. much worse than we even anticipated. Do you know how big it is? Well, I think it's going to be close to 350, 400 million. Um, that's you just know, does the that include the- That's the shortfall. The, no, I'm talking about the overall pension. with- no, with the, with the pension payment that's due, 277 in the first budget, with the cost of police and fire contracts, and with the cost of settlements coming down the pike, yeah. what is the total 
first year budget shortfall that she will face? I, I think it might be 450 to 500. But we haven't seen the numbers yet from the administration. I think she has. Um, they haven't been shared by the Emanuel administration with the public. Um, police and fire contracts, you know, that might take another year. Poli the, the police contract for sure. I don't even think they've been at the table with Mayor Emanuel. Um, from what I understand, they've, they've not even sat across from each other yet yeah. to figure out the size of the table. <laughs> I mean, that's, and that's wrong we headed. We can lend them this table. That's right. That's the mayor basically saying, I'm kicking that off to the next yeah. mayor and not even trying. Yeah. Um, so that's an Emanuel failure, I think, that he couldn't even, he had a dictate uh, for, from the mayor's task force on accountability, which Lori Lightfoot helped run, um, you know, to come in and make these changes. Never happened. But that's going to cost us, I think, not um, excessively, but it is a contract that we need to resolve at some point. And I think getting the police to the table and at least discussing things is going to be important for her. So the shortfall, you know, you look at the pension payment, maybe that doesn't come right away, but they've got to be prepared for it for next year's budget. Um, I think that the, you know, the other revenue sources that we're talking about have to come. You have to look at the cuts. You have, and I don't mean cuts to the basic services like streets and sanitation, but you can definitely revamp those as well. Nobody's really watching over all these contracts. A lot of the audits that the Inspector General has put forward have never been followed through on. That's something we want to do in either the Finance Committee or a new um, auditing committee where we're actually bringing those departments to the table and saying, where are the savings? You know, why are we, why are we blowing through hundreds of millions of dollars that we don't need to? Um, reviewing contracts, I think she's got to do a little bit of both of that. But there's, you know, I, I had a panel discussion with muni analysts the other day. Uh, they are obviously concerned about making sure that development continues, that um, we have a mayor who's open and honest about the discussion of these pensions and the other debt service that we have. So they're going to have to look at a lot of these uh, pockets of, of investment that we have, um, look at the debt service, and make sure that we're really following through with taxpayers on that as well. Scott Wegovac, thank you so much. Thanks and very good much, luck Fran. to you in your quest for the finance chair. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all next week.